So here we go, Geo World Geography, part six. <laughs> So looking at indigenous rights, okay, so this is Aborigines, we're talking about Australia. Aborigines, no treaty, no nothing. They had something called terra nullius, and this means that literally they got to Australia, and they were the aboriginal people, and they said, oh look, this is owned by no one. The aborigines aren't really people, so it's terra nullius, it's not owned by anyone, we take it. That's a question, particularly the terra nullius, owned by none, but the Aborigines are going to be significant. A couple of questions. Um, and it was even, they would have trains going, and Aborigines would climb up on the trains to see what was happening when they would stop, and you'd have people just shooting off the Aborigines. Just the lack of understanding of other human beings is pretty extreme. They were put onto reserves. Um, so they were put onto small areas, and they didn't get the vote until the 1960s. And again, well, if you just think, I know the 1960s America. for you guys are like about a million years ago, but really, not that long ago when you think the people of Australia could not vote about anything in Australia until somewhat, somewhat recently. And they talk about the stolen generations. Another important term. These are on your terms list also. Basically, 1928 to 1964, even, um, they would steal, they would take Aboriginal children to be raised in white families or white run institutions. Um, and we look at this, you know. It was just, you ripped somebody away from their family to make them more like you. And you look at that, and that's, it's disgusting. And we did the same thing in the United States with indigenous people. So before we get judgy about anybody else. Um, so this is a big issue. So the film that you guys are seeing, they talk about half caste, if you're half or if you're quarter aborigine. And um, one of the ideas was to breed the aborigine out of them. So one even using the word breed, and the idea was to make sure that they would look like the Europeans. And some of them are saying, we just want to incorporate them into white society. <laughs> Basically, brainwashing children to take on a whole new outlook on the culture and their lifestyle and everything. Um, and some of them, they were saying, we just want to give them the best of, the best of their culture the best of the white culture. So it's incredibly, um, you know, colonization at its worst and most disgusting. And you guys are seeing a film on that. Who has seen Rabbit Proof Fence already for this week? Okay, so it's, it's interesting, it's beautiful, it's, it's not a real, you know, <laughs> not a real upper. <laughs> um, so this is, this is from the film of what you'll see, and it's based on a true story, Molly Kelly. She was part of the stolen generation, so they stole her, they took her, and they, and they show it in a very dramatic way in the film, from her family, and to a white institution, and then you see her escape. She walks over a thousand miles, this kid, to get back to where she's from. So it's an incredible story. Um, and this is a picture of her daughter, Doris. Um, and if you watch and maxed the quiz on this film, that's like adding a whole grade notch on top of the test that you're going to take, the exam. It can be very, very helpful. And Doris was then stolen. So she was part of the stolen generation. And she, when she was stolen, after her mother came back and her mother had a baby, then they took Doris away. And so she thought her mother had abandoned her. It was, it was not clear what had happened. Um, and this are, you'll see these characters in the, Molly, Doris is the daughter, and Daisy. You'll see Daisy in the film as well. These are the real people. Um, so, it's, I mean, the, the injustice is, it's hard to even use words. And it's interesting when um, the daughter talks about it. 
because she says it was so terrible. She said, and I got educated in a different way, so then I could write this book about my mother. So complicated. She died in 2004. So Rabbit Proof Friends is what you will see, which is the story of Molly uh, coming back. And um, even if it's making you feel sad, you can listen to the music and feel wonderful. Best original score. <laughs> And Jack Bauer is in it. <laughs> Peter Gabriel. I know that's a sore consolation when you're feeling sad about the movie, but good stuff. So there's recognition of this now. That this Another happened. Here. They had sorry books. In 2000, 300,000 people marched. This is in, in Australia, for those of you who have been to the, the Opera House. I got it off the web because I have not been. <laughs> um, but that's very indicative. And, uh, and they signed what were called sorry books. And in these books, it says, we stole your land, we stole your children, we stole your lives. Sorry. <laughs> and although I'm making light of it right there, actually, this is a really, really big deal. This says, this is acknowledging previous injustice, which many, many countries have not done. Um, so they are gaining territory, and in February, actually in 2008, this was a big deal, that the Australian Prime Minister publicly apologized to the indigenous people. And again, you think, okay, well, everybody knows it was a bad thing that happened. Well, of course it still dictates so much of what happens today there, just as injustices here uh, inform what we do today. So indigenous rights in New Zealand, this is different. They had a treaty, Treaty of Waitangi. Um, and this is at the Maori, and they reinterpret it, and, it's, and, it's, and it, is, it is honored. And so they're considered people. A treaty that was unenforced for a while. People of the land. And actually, for, when I was first looking for jobs out of grad school, I applied for one in New Zealand. I was like, <laughs> cool. And one of the things I had to put on my application was that I accepted the Treaty of Waitangi. I didn't know what it was at the time. I was like, cool, okay. So that, that's how important it is. So it does give them land and fishing rights, different than the Aborigines. So that's if you go to the museum in Wellington, they have a depiction of, of what's left of the treaty. And that's a school group there. So also that New Zealand students learn that this is the history and they're incorporated into that. And now, this particular treaty, there will be a clip on it because uh, in the work in the worksheet here because the book spends a bit of time on it and there may be questions from the book. I'm not sure how much time she's going to spend on it, but it was um, it's an important treaty for the Maori tribesmen of New Zealand, um, the, the counterparts to the Aborigines. And it did actually get reinterpreted uh, in the 70s, like you can see there, and it had an impact on the, on the people. And if you look on many U.S. calendars, you will see the Treaty of Waitangi Day. So you can look on your calendar and go, oh, globalization. So it's on our calendars and many of them too. And also, there's an incorporation of the Maori culture, which is very different than in Australia. And in New Zealand, Maori are actively a part of what is happening. So... They're all players for what kind of sport? Rugby. Those are rugby players. Um, and you've got the All Blacks. And they are doing the haka, which is a traditional Maori dance. And they're doing this before. These people are not necessarily Maori. Or Maori is also. And what it is, it's a pre-battle call against the enemy. So the haka is a, I'm going to kick your booty. Be on the test. So before rugby games, They'll have this. And again, if you look, you know, rugby is, is brought in from the, the Brits. They're incorporating this Maori aspect. And also, we see these pictures. Where, you know, haka. Remember the term. Not haka, tui. Haka. A traditional dance before the rugby. You see a lot of it with the, the eyes bugged out and the tongue all out. And that, that's supposed to be a menacing, scary, scary thing that they would do traditionally. Yeah. And then just quickly, guys, wrapping it up, a little, a little feel bad. <laughs> Poverty and inequality. 
Okay, this is a, that's the, the Sydney Opera House, um, Australia, New Zealand. Most of the, the wealthier people are going to be of European descent. Um, this is just an Aboriginal shopping trip, and clearly not all Aboriginal people live this way. However, this wouldn't be that uncommon, and clearly everybody's piled into the back of a truck. They don't have their own cars. This is how they're getting around as opposed to how the people of European descent would be. Um, it's a little bit different in the, in the islands because um, you have subsistence affluence. Subsistence. Subsistence is what? Subsistence agriculture. Subsistence is you're not selling it. You're just doing it for yourself. So actually they, they are using their own resources. A term, subsistence affluence, that means they're farming and gathering their own agriculture or survival. And they're fishing and things that for in many ways they can support themselves, so, so money doesn't play quite the same role. Um, and again, this is, I'm at the traditional table, and this woman dresses this way anyway. She's got the dark, the older people wear the, the brown leaves. Um, but you can see there are still things that, uh, that there is inequality, because you still want money for things. And if you see, you've got a little, oh, you know, they're not, they're not growing everything that they like. Um, <laughs> and he, he's... He's got the soda in one hand, and it's like a hostess Twinkie or some, that kind of thing in the other hand. Um, but uh, sodas and Twinkies aside, it's, it's, this is a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Okay. Some terms here, important. Uh, you'll get a list of them in the term section. It's important to deal off of all of these terms in, in terms of just understanding and recognizing them. That's what a multiple choice test is anyway. Recognition, okay? So when you see the terms that were mentioned in the video and then you see them in the terms sheet that I give you, uh, it, it's gonna be a cake test. <laughs>